What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today I'm diving into, as the title says, bean temperature and extraction. And so when I talk about those two things, what I mean is the temperature of the actual whole bean coffee when it goes into the grinder, and then the product that comes out and looking at the extraction of said product. So what I did was, is I had this order that came from La Marzocco's home subscription, which unfortunately is always sending two bags of the same coffee. And so now I'm gonna take those two bags and turn it into an experiment. So in those two bags, I have 340 grams in each bag, so about 680 grams of coffee total. I'm going to break that 680 grams of coffee into three different categories of about 226 grams a piece, and one is going to be room temperature, one is going to be frozen, and one is going to be heated up. I'm gonna pull shots with each of those coffees in that state and see what the extraction difference is or if there's even one at all. First up, I'm gonna be working with room temperature coffee. So nothing is really crazy or different here. I'm gonna be pulling coffee straight from my Atmos like I would any other day or any other video. I'm not gonna expect that there's gonna be anything different going on here. It's been sitting here overnight and it's a pretty temperate day here in San Diego. So I'd say 65 to 68 degrees, nothing crazy. We're gonna dose it out as normal. In all of these shots, I'm gonna do throughout the entire experiment, I'm gonna be putting 18 grams of coffee in and I'm gonna be aiming for about 40 grams out, give or take one gram. I'm also going to be very particular on the output side, so I wanna make sure that all these shots are falling within that one gram range. Any shot that falls out is gonna get thrown out of the experiment and unfortunately is gonna end up being wasted. So I wanna make sure I'm sticking to this very specific numbers. The shot times are gonna be running around 24 to 25 seconds on average. I wanna make sure that the shots are flowing relatively quick just to get a nice smooth extraction all the way through where it's not getting blocked up by a ton of different fines or really taking a long time to extract. So let's pull this first shot and see where we can land. This shot is running as I expected, and this one's going to land within the range that I want to be in. So we're gonna stop the pump at 24 seconds, as well as the timer. We're gonna take this off and measure the output and make sure we're within range. So we're looking at 40.7 and 24 seconds, that's well within range, and we're going to let it cool for one minute while we prep up the refractometer. Every shot tested will be done on a freshly zeroed out refractometer using the brew water to make sure that we're not adding in any extra minerals or leaving anything out. All shots will also be cooled for one minute, swirled aggressively in the Kruv cup that has internal fins to stir the shot, and all samples will be taken from underneath the crema but above the bottom of the cup. And last but not least, all shots will also be filtered. So let's see where this first shot lands. So on this pull, we're looking at a TDS of 7.97, but let's take a look at the results from a second shot. I wanna make sure that I'm showing at least two samples per group, just so you can see the breadth of the TDS responses I get from each coffee. There is some variation in here, and I wanna make sure that I'm clear about that, while also making sure that the video doesn't end up being an hour and a half long. So for the sake of brevity, we're gonna show two samples per each group. Our second sample for room temperature comes out to a whopping 8.06 TDS. So you can see there is a bit of a difference between the two shots. And so let's take a look at what these actually mean in terms of percentage for extraction when it comes to espresso. So here are the results for all seven room temperature shots tested. As you can see, there is some variance here on the upper end of extraction yield, you have 18.22%, and on the lower end of extraction yield, you have 17.98%. But that's not really a huge difference. You can see that the amount of grams out in those shots doesn't vary massively. So added up and averaged out, this comes out to 18.08% as an average with room temperature coffee, and that falls well within the range of 18 to 22%, which is kind of the ideal standard in specialty coffee. Next up, let's try heating our coffee and see what that does. Now this is something that I've seen talked about on James Hoffman's channel before. He definitely preferred the taste of this, but I'm wondering how this will work with extraction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out 18 grams of beans, put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Any longer than that, depending on your microwave, you're gonna risk some smoke and maybe your coffee going into second crack. So just, you know, you've been warned. From the microwave, it's going to go straight to the grinder. From touch, I can tell that it's definitely pretty hot, but it's not burning hot. So 
We're gonna drop it straight in and we're gonna grind it up. The one thing I do notice in grinding is it sounds like it's definitely softer. The beans sound softer as they grind. It's kind of a hard thing to explain, but if you're somebody who goes from dark roast to light roast, you can definitely hear a lighter roast coffee getting ground up because those beans are so much denser than you would hearing a softer, more brittle, darker roast. Now that our shot is prepped up, let's pull it. Like I mentioned in the last test, we're doing 18 grams in, shooting for 40 to 41 grams out in 24 to 25 seconds. So I've dialed this in. There was a couple shots in between just to get this dialed in perfectly. We've got 25 seconds or 24 seconds at this point, and we're looking at a 40.8 output. So let's test this one up. So as our shot cools down, we're gonna zero out our refractometer as always to make sure we're getting a nice clean reading. And now it's time to stir up our shot so we can take our sample. Now that the shot's been mixed, we're gonna pull our sample. Remember, we're always pulling the sample from below the crema, but above the bottom of the cup to make sure we're getting a nice, even sample. And with our filter attached, now it's time to put this in the refractometer and see where it falls. And this one lands at 8.21%, which is a pretty significant spike from the room temperature shots. Now let's take a look at a second test, just to show you, like I mentioned in the first test, the breadth of results that you can get from this. Now this shot, pulled at the exact same parameters with coffee that was microwaved for 30 seconds, comes out to 8.32%, which is a bit of a spike from the first one. So like I mentioned, there's definitely some differences in the results shot to shot. I'm trying to stay as close as I can, but I wanna make sure I'm saving some time and not showing every single shot. But let's take a look at all seven shot results right now. And as you can see from these results, the extraction yield on these heated beans kicked up quite a bit from the room temperature. So if you're looking at the top end at 18.77%, and at the bottom end on this one, you're looking at 18.33%. So that's a pretty distinct jump in extraction yield from just heating your coffee beans. And averaged out, it comes out to almost 18.5% of your average extraction percentage. So that's pretty good. And now let's talk about freezing your beans and how that works. If you're familiar with anything on Instagram or you follow coffee, you've probably seen this picture pop up on a few different places. Now this picture shows hoppers basically built into a freezer. And the idea behind this is when you grind frozen coffee, you get an even particle distribution. It doesn't break up quite the same way as it does when you're grinding either, let's say hot or even room temperature. You get more even distribution of grinds. That view basically means ideally you're going to get a better extraction and potentially a better tasting coffee. That's kind of up to the person tasting it, but I wanna see what that actually means to me and what it means to the refractometer that I just bought. So let's find out. I'm going to measure out 18 grams of coffee. I'm gonna put them in separate baggies, put them in the freezer for 12 hours, and I'm gonna just remove them one at a time. I don't wanna to have to take out a whole bunch of coffee all at once. I wanna make sure that I can just grab one bag and run with it. Same as with the heated coffee, it's coming straight from the freezer and dropping directly into the grinder. Grinding it up, again, I can hear that kind of heavier grinding sound. Obviously, it takes a little more effort to grind frozen beans than the hot beans, but let's see what it actually does in terms of extraction percentage. And of course, I'm taking extra precautions on every shot to making sure that each one is prepped the same in every category. So we're doing 18 grams in, as always. I've dialed this in for a 24 second shot. We're aiming for 40 to 41 grams out. Let's see how it runs. The shot itself doesn't look any different than what my expectations would be from one bean temperature to another, but we have our perfect ratios here. We got 24 seconds. We're looking at a shot that weighs 40.4 grams. So let's let it cool off for a moment, zero out our refractometer, give it a spin and test it up. As always, we're pulling our samples from below the crema and above the bottom of the cup to make sure we're getting a nice clean sample and we're going to filter it. So let's get this one started. And this is where things start to get kind of interesting. That's a pretty significant jump from the heated and a pretty massive jump from the room temperature coffee. Let's pull another sample from another shot and see where this one falls. We've got another pretty solid jump. So as you can see, there is some difference between those two shots. So let's look at all seven shots and all their results. Now, similarly to the other tests, there are some differences between the shots and that's to be expected, but 
When it comes down to it, the extraction yield is much, much higher on frozen coffee than it is on any other type. Now, my results seem to corroborate the idea that freezing your coffee, grinding it while it's frozen does create a better grind size distribution, which then creates a better, more even extraction, which in turn creates a higher extraction percentage overall. But we're gonna have to dig just a little bit deeper in this. And to do that, we're going to sift the grinds using the Kruv sifter. So I've got this sifter here. I've set it up to have two different layers. I've got the 500 and underneath that, there is the 200 layer. So what I wanna do is have the most in the middle. What it's gonna do is separate the courses and the super fines and give us kind of a nice even idea of what it's gonna be like in the center. So what I'm gonna do is do 18 grams of the room temperature coffee first. I'm going to grind them all on the exact same grind size and see where they come out on the sifter. In the coffee goes to the sifter, we're going to close it up and give it a shake for one minute. Once we're done doing that, we're going to stop, pull the top off and take a closer look. As you can see, the top layer has some, the middle layer has the most, and the bottom layer does have a bit of a dusting. So let's see how much each of these layers actually weighs. The top layer, we're looking at 6.1 grams. The middle layer, we're looking at 10.9 grams. And the bottom layer with the little light dusting, we're looking at 0.1 grams. Next up, we're gonna do the heated coffee. In the microwave for 30 seconds it goes, then into the grinder. We're gonna grind it up while it's still hot, and we're gonna put it in the sifter. Same process, we're using the same filters, so in it goes, and we're gonna shake it up for one minute straight. Once the one minute has elapsed, we're gonna set it down, take the top off, and see what we've got. So we've got the top layer, the middle layer, and the bottom layer, which has a little less than the last one. So let's see how much each layer weighs. Top layer is coming in at about 7.5 grams. Middle layer is coming in at 9.9 grams. And the bottom layer is zero grams. Next up, we've got the frozen coffee. So 18 grams from the bag in the freezer, straight into the grinder. We're gonna grind it up. We're going to drop it directly in the sifter with the same filters. We're going to shake it up for one minute straight and then we're gonna open it up and see what kind of results we have. As you can see, we've got our top layer, our middle layer, which is a little bit deceiving on how much is actually in there, and then we've got our bottom layer, which has so few you can barely see the coffee in there. So from right away, you can tell that the frozen coffee has the least amount of fines, which is kind of a big deal. But let's see how much these layers actually weigh. So our first layer weighs 11.1 grams, our second layer weighs 6.1 to 2 grams, and like I mentioned, the bottom layer had nothing in it. Now, for all you mathematicians out there, there's a reason why none of these numbers actually added up to the amount I put in. None of them came out to 18 grams, and it's because the sifter alone holds some coffee back. You can see it's stuck in some corners, it's stuck inside the filter itself, and it kind of holds back probably, I would say, one, maybe two grams total in each layer, and then it's hard to pour them in there cleanly, so I made a bit of a mess and missed some gram weights on the outside. Now let's talk tasting and final thoughts for this experiment. Let's talk about how these coffees tasted. So the room temperature coffee had sweeter notes up front, followed by a medium brightness. It had a rounder body with lighter, fruitier tones lingering at the finish, and the aftertaste contained heavy chocolate notes. The heated coffee, the sweet notes are blended nicely with acidity, creating a smoother overall balance to the shot. The mouthfeel of the espresso also has an increased smoothness. And I remember this being something that was talked about by James Hoffman when he talked about heating up his coffee. And lastly, the frozen coffee had upfront sweet notes and acidity that were really well balanced with the fullest body of the three shots. The aftertaste of chocolate lingers without any bitterness, so that's a nice surprise. But I wouldn't say one is better than the other. I would say they're a little bit different, but overall, they're not massively different. And it's not gonna make a difference day to day if you make your espresso with frozen beans, heated beans, or room temperature beans. So when it comes to frozen coffee, it seems like freezing it does create a better grind side distribution. We saw that with the sifting test where we had the least amount of fines. We had also one layer that had the most coffee in it as opposed to the other two samples of heated or room temperature. The other interesting thing is the heated coffee does provide you a bit of a bump in extraction. And 
you know, I'm just guessing here, but my thought is that heating coffee expands the bean a little bit, kind of like roasting it a little darker. When you roast darker, it's easier to extract. And that's kind of, you know, my thought. When you grind up that coffee that's been heated up, it's soft in that moment. And instead of getting those breaks and snaps as you grind the beans and get those really odd shaped grounds, you might get a more consistently shaped grind. So with all that stuff, all these things that I've done, the TDS testing, the sifting, the grinding, the freezing, the heating, all that stuff, let me know your thoughts. I'm curious to hear your thoughts down below. But in the end, as the sun sets on another day of working on this video, I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna call it a finished video. I'm gonna put it together, send it out in the world, and see what y'all think. And a big thank you to my April Patreon supporters, Ads, James B, David, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Thomas B, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean, Joey, Thomas S, Noel, Spookus, Bound Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Nathan, Aiden, Jonathan, Claire, Stephen, James K, Josh, and Andrew. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on the Patreon, there's a link in the description and up above in the right hand corner right now. And if it wasn't for my Patreon supporters, I wouldn't have been able to put this video together. They helped me buy this equipment and put this video together. Lastly, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos every Friday. Follow me on Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week. My blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.